Yeah, so welcome again in the name of Explorer Land and NOAA. Um, this event today is about scaling finance for nature-based projects. So I'm Alexander from Explorer.land and together with Marco, um, the founder of the NOAA conference, we want to warmly welcome you to this event. But why have we selected this event? Why have we put together this great lineup? So I have to explain a little bit the reasons behind it. So um, with NOAA Zurich in December 2020, we set up the first Explore Land project stage, basically a stage where conservation, forestry, and agroforestry projects, so generally speaking, nature-based projects, could present on the stage their investment opportunity. And um, yeah, I would say this event has been a great success in terms of building the networks, exchanging between these partners and finding um, um, collaborators. But we also see that there's a, a huge potential for, for improving the collaboration between projects and um, investment and the investment side by a better, by better matchmaking. Um, yeah, so, and in, in, in order to Im improve this matchmaking, um, we thought um, we, we also need to bring in the investor side, and this is what we're doing today. So, in the reality, projects um, often, ha often have a strong focus on the operations and the impact they have um, on the ground, whether investors require business plans, monitoring, risk hedging, and of course also a strong um, legal framework. And therefore one can say um, both parties often live not only physically separated, they also have different priorities and um, different kind of technical languages, which creates a gap um, of a mutual understanding. And with this event series, we want to help to close this gap to help scale finance nature-based projects so that investors understand what projects need and projects understand what investors need. And this event is really focused um, on um, informing um, projects what are the requirements from a funder's perspective to invest in nature-based um, projects. And for this event, I also, um, want to make clear that's not an event um, of some lonely wolves where each one is pitching against the other. So we have come here together as a group of like-minded organizations um, and also with a vision to make um, a real change. Yeah. So, but before getting um, the presentation started, I would like to hand over to Marco, who is also the co-host of this event and he will give you a background about NOAA Zurich's sustainability focus and will introduce the Nature Data Alliance, which is a network of technology and data companies that support this nature-based project sector. So, the floor is yours, Marco. Okay. Well, uh, my life has been pretty much defined by disrupt change, disrupt the change or change through disruption. One was the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers in 2008 and the birth of NOAA, um, like a platform to showcase sustainability leaders today. But back then it started very much with digital companies. And when we were preparing for the first conference in Zurich, which focused on sustainability, we, we found many solutions, but we also found like many silos and even there was a discussion around standards and nobody really attempted to build standards so the idea is that NOAA has helped to unite speakers who all do certain aspects of natural capital infrastructure be it pricing be it measurement be it biodiversity be it a scientific be it whatever type of part in that equation of a natural capital system bit like a digital arc, um, not built out of wood, but out of data. And very soon you get into questions, okay, how can we collect data at low prices for projects to measure impact and have the famous feedback loop? So we, we also 
yeah, I have by now many partners, but this is not today to discuss the Nature Data Alliance. This is to serve project developers, which I feel are the most underrated stakeholder group and most disregarded. You have big governmental fundings through lots of consultancies on the ground, but like climate entrepreneurs or nature entrepreneurs across agriculture, agroforestry, carbon, tourism, any type of um, yeah, CO2 related certificate business, they need to get support. And we like very much what open forest does with explore.land. The NOAA conference, yeah, for the first time we had a project stage, which is different to a startup. But in the end, what's lacking, it's kind of an industry platform. And that's what we are trying to build um, together with 135 partners. We have data businesses and we have project um, partners. We're now piloting in Kenya and in Brazil with the Yavanava um, tribe, which also came to the conference. Their chief he traveled, I think, several days and was our star speaker. Um, definitely for me, it was amazing. So um, as part of our work, we find platforms, platforms from the new world who are yeah, not only Web3, but do a great work of aggregation, finding, building trust in corporates for you as project developers to raise money from and showcasing them to you and also having them explain their criteria of what they actually need is what we find is a good thing to do between the conferences. The next conference is in December and Alex and Steve have taken the initiative. So we are happy to, to promote and support this. And also we'll have like a, maybe like a recording afterwards, which we can distribute all. And it's about creating reality and the current carbon credit industry, for example, or agriculture industry needs to get digitized so that new business models can actually flourish. And I see a lot of names here of people who uh, yeah, bring lots of stuff to the table. So with that, maybe back to, to Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Marco, for this um, introduction and welcome. Um, we know going to open the stage. Um, before that, um, I would like to welcome all the presenters of today. So please switch on your videos. We will do like a quick introduction round before we then go into the um, single presentations. Just for you to know, um, after the um, introduction, uh, after the presentations, we will also have a summary round where we will um, aggregate the core messages, the, 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 the core takeaways, so where everyone has like a minute to summarize what they have presented. And we also encourage you now during the presentation to ask all the questions and direct them to the speakers in the chat. My colleague, Emilia, um, she will later um, facilitate the Q&A and will yeah, ask your questions directly to the speakers to have it in a structured way. So let's go. I think we start with Damien. Yep. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Damien Kuhn. I'm a vice president of forestry partnerships and development at Terraformation. I have been working for the last 17 years for forestry uh, and agroforestry project development involving community on the ground, of course, and mostly in uh, Africa, Latin America, um, for most of uh, my project. And, and I'm now based in Lome, Togo, West Africa, and happy to share with you what we propose to the project. Thank you, Damien. I hand over to David and Nicola. I take it and start. I'm David. Hello. Uh, thank you for this great uh, event. Um, I, my background is business. I'm entrepreneur from Berlin, in Germany, but I have roots in West Africa too, Damien. Yeah. And um, uh, I did a lot of internet ventures and uh, started now co-founder with my co-founder Jerome Good Carbon to drive corporate climate action here from Berlin with selected nature-based products. And I'm excited to share with you what we do and hope to get uh, good feedback and find new partners. Thank you. 
Yeah, and I'm Nicola. I also work at Good Carbon uh, together with David. I'm the director for Nature Based Solutions. Uh, my background is in science and biology and did a lot of um, education on climate change and biodiversity loss. So, yeah, really looking forward to connecting with um, many like minded people here today. Thank you, Nicola. Over to Vela. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation, first of all. My name is Bella Agulanci. I'm the founder and the CEO of Envarex. Uh, we offer a simple and convenient platform to fund uh, early stage projects and trade future carbon credits. Based in Munich, uh, looking forward to this call. Thank you very much. And now, finally, to Michael. I think we lost Fred in between, but uh, happy oh. to chip in. Um, so hi, Michael. Um, so the positive spin of Galerius would be that uh, we have like 100 years of banking experience in the founder team. So the negative spin is obviously that we are quite old, but um, still young enough to start a new venture with um, um, Calerius, um, where we're looking at um, nature as an asset class and really looking at the secondary market, i.e. the marketplaces, but also the primary business, i.e. Initiation, initiation of products. Um, from a very banking perspective, I have to say, and how to like um, wrap financial uh, institutional invest the great products around it. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Sorry, Frederick, for missing you out. Um, it's your turn. No problem. Hello, everyone. I'm Fred. Uh, I'm a Swiss natural scientist uh, and also the CEO and co-founder of Open Forest Protocol. I'm here with Aurelien. Um, she's our chief climate officer, so I'll say hi in a second. And so what we have developed at Open Forest Protocol is a transparent measurement, reporting, and verification solution, providing a new digital carbon standard for forestation projects around the world. And uh, we're super happy to be here and, and present alongside with our, our other partners what we, uh, we can support you with. Thank you. Over to you, Aurelien. Is still muted. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Super happy to be here. So I have a background in environmental engineering. Um, and yeah, I'm the chief climate officer at Open Forest Protocol. Uh, and as Fred was presenting, I don't think you need to know it more right now. I'll present in a few more yeah, details in a few more minutes. Yeah. Yeah, then thank you. We are very glad to, to have you here. And we will start now with the first presentation from Terraformation Damien. The floor is yours. Yep. I think you can see my screen, everybody. Yep. Good. Yes. Well, um, Terraformation is a Hawaii based company which aim to restore the forest to capture carbon revitalize nature and uh, build thriving communities. We are, um, we are a startup with uh, uh, three years now, and we are a mix of forester, of biodiversity experts, tech uh, people from the Silicon Valley, and uh, finance people. We are now about 100 people in different places of the world, and we are working in 13 countries with uh, um, 19 projects now. And in, in order to increase the reforestation projects, we are providing trainings, infrastructures, technology for monitoring, and um, access to private finance. Um, we, we did a survey of uh, 230 foresters from 63 countries about uh, one or two years ago. And we came with this main obvious <laughs> finding, which is that uh, most of the forestry teams spend their time chasing for money. And it's the first bottleneck that uh, they all answer to our, our survey. And um, then we, we decided to, 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 to put our focus on, on this and private and carbon financing can be, of course, a solution, but all the feedback we receive from the carbon for the project forestry teams on the ground is that 
carbon finance is too, com too complicated. We don't have the adequate skills to understand the methodology and to spend some time uh, writing PDD. Our project size is too small to access to the carbon certification bodies. Um, we, there is an investment need that is too higher for us on the ground than all other bottleneck that uh, they, they shared with us. Um, that's why we created the, the accelerator and we basically are the, the one-stop shop for reforestation projects by providing access to, to private finance, carbon finance, um, uh, infrastructures for seeds collection because we, we promote native biodiverse forests, not monoculture, which are not good for, for the reforestation. We provide also uh, technology uh, tools, uh, tracking tools, very simple open source tools to, to improve the, the tracking and impact measure, measurement of the project. And we provide also training uh, through our capacity building program and what we call the Terraformation Academy. Um, our C2 Carbon Forest Accelerator is open for all um, forestry project developer on the ground. Uh, we have some criteria, of course. I can give you some example of criteria we're using, but it's open for everybody who has uh, the potential to scale up. And we designed this accelerator within three phases. One is we first make a capacity building program during 10 weeks, supporting and empowering the forestry team to better understand what is uh, uh, carbon finance, how are the methodology, and to try to make them as simple as possible for forestry teams. And this, we achieve this with one important de de deliverable, which is a feasibility study that we build together with uh, the project teams. And then if we together decide to move forward for uh, carbon certification, we enter into the phase two which is piloting on the ground. Then we have uh, some, some funds for, for seed funds for, for pilot projects, and also to set up nurseries and seed banks for, for bio, biodiversity uh, seedlings and projects. And we also train on our plant tracking software called Terraware. And during that phase two, uh, our in-house team is uh, developing the, the PDD and, and, uh, when, and is putting it to, to certification in order to be able to launch the phase three, which is uh, the, the scale-up and investment, full investment of the planting activity and project act activity on the ground. Um, the, the work process is for a two-year cycle um, of, of our accelerator. What we really want is one, you understand, empower the, the, the team with this capacity building. We want to make it together, not that only consultants are, are coming and writing the document for the certification, but we want to, to make it together. And another commitment we have is that we are committed to ensuring for us with team the majority of the return of of carbon revenue for on the ground, both for, of course, the operation cost and also for community benefits for the surrounding community and for the land owners um, where the forests are, are created. Um, and um, here is our software, Terraware. Um, as I told you, it's used for, for the, the team on the ground, project manager and, and monitoring and evaluation guys of the team to be able to, to, to monitor, take plots, GPS, and assess the results, and also impact, and in particular, social impact of the project. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Damien. That was interesting and in time. So. Um... Now I'm handing over to Frederic Fournier and Aureline to give their presentation. Yes, thank you. Um, so we realized we were 
most of us white male. So I'm going to handle the presentation to Orlin. So we'll have a more diversified uh, presenter. So yeah, so I think everybody can see my screen. Okay, so today I just want to present how um, OFP can help project operators access and unlock carbon financing. So first of all, what is OFP? So OFP provides free comprehensive digital software tools for forest projects. I guess you all know what MRV stands for, but just to recap, uh, it stands for measurement, reporting and verification. So I'll show you very briefly how it works um, from your perspective of project developer. So what happens is that you have a project operator dashboard on which you register your project, you upload your uh, polygon of your project area. You can give some information about your project description, goals, benefits, tree species planted, and so on. And then what happens is that we will assign on your polygon sample plots that you have to go and visit on the ground and measure trees from. And this data collection, ground data collection, is made through the mobile app, the Forrester mobile app, which is also a mobile app that was developed by us, so by OFP. And what happens is that you go on the ground in the sample plots that you have to go and measure trees from, and you report for each tree in the sample plot, the height, the circumference, you take photos of the trees, and you report also on the tree status. So is it alive, is it damaged, is it dead, and so on. Once this data collection on the ground is done, you can send all your information back to your project operator dashboard, where you can add additional reports, eventually like drone imagery, if you have some. And once you're ready, you send all this data to our network of validators. And this is how FP is kind of very different from the, the current like space uh, of stand carbon standards. Um, you don't only have one validator, but you have multiple validators that will be evaluating your data that was collected on the ground um, and evaluating basically if there are mistakes or if it's all good. And our validators have like a broad range of skills linked to forests. So they can be environmental consultants, forest experts, remote sensing companies with expertise in forests and so on. There are also VVBs from like that work also in collaboration with Verag or standards. So they're very diverse. And once your data is validated, this is where you can access carbon financing. And basically the carbon stored in your forest is computed and calculated based on the measurements that were done on the ground and also in the future based on remote sensing data. So something that's super important also for us is that all the data that's collected on the ground is like transparency display, transparently displayed. So this means that it's accessible, it's stored on chain, and it's here forever. It's immutable. Um, very concretely, what do we have? So for project operators, as I was saying, we have this project operator dashboard which is a very user-friendly web app that lets you manage all your forest projects. And then we have this mobile app, the Forester mobile app, that is available for Android and iPhones. And you can see your project area. You can see all the sample plots that you need to go and collect data from. And you can just like, yeah, collect tree data from the ground straight from your app without any network connection, it works perfectly fine. And once you're back at the office or where you have some network, you can send all the information that you collected on the ground and it will appear in your dashboard. So this is, yeah, we also have a bunch of tools that will be like launching very soon, um, but we can tell you more about all this like in the future. And as I was explaining also the carbon methodologies that we have, so we've been developing a new digital and streamlined carbon standard compared to what we currently have existing. Um, all the, the equations and all the methodology is pretty similar to what um, was recommended in the CDM by the UNFCC and in the VDCS methodologies. 
So pretty similar, but it's digital. So you don't have to do all these like huge reports, data collection on the ground with pen and paper, Excel sheets, and so on. Of course, not all forest projects can access carbon financing. The carbon projects need to be additional, permanent, um, and we definitely evaluate this internally for the moment. So there's a whitelisting process that happens. And if the project checks the boxes for carbon financing, then you can access carbon financing. Something that was also important for us is to be very conservative or conservative on the equations. So this means that you won't be like overestimating the carbon that is stored in your forests. And finally, um, we are really like an open-minded protocol. So we really value collaboration. We will continue continuously improve uh, the methodologies, add new methodologies. So for the moment, we have methodologies for afforestation, reforestation, agroforestry. Um, mangroves will probably be coming soon. And yeah, we will also include new technologies like remote sensing, um, IoT eventually, and so on. And as I was yeah, explaining, we're building an ecosystem. So we truly believe that we need collaboration in our space to enable the scaling of the financing, but also the scaling of the nature-based um, project. So we collaborate tightly with project developers. We collaborate a lot with our validators. And we also are part of the nature-based, um, the Nature Data Alliance, of course. And we also have partnerships with marketplaces, marketplaces like Senken, to can flow carbon to enable the off takers to come and buy the carbon credits. Um, and we also have yeah, tight uh, discussions with the governments for Kenya, for example, and Ivory Coast to develop like the digital MRV at the level of the governments. And that's it for me today. Uh, Fred will do the recap in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Aurelien and Fred, for this presentation. We are handing over now to David and Nicola from Good Carbon. Please. Beautiful. I hope Nicola helps with the you. screen share. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I can't share, but now I can because it was the other screen sharing skill going on ongoing. Um so I just start because I know some of the slides. <laughs> um and um I start with the vision and explain a little bit the good carbon, our value proposition, our approach. Um, why do we do what we do? Because we see the urgency and the need and also the possibility to shift a lot of money, big capital to restore nature and more specific ecosystems. Um, we think that, uh, or we know that it is uh, trillions of money that should go there in a very short time. And uh, it's a complicated issue uh, to, to address. We believe that the voluntary carbon market and corporates in general can play a relevant role and drive this effort, uh, but they need the tools and they need to manage all the risks they face to scale things up from their end. And this uh, basically, uh, and the big love to nature for myself <laughs> and Jerome and a lot of like more philanthropic motivated activities in Africa uh, um, in our past uh, became now a new venture and a business model. We founded Good Carbon two and a half years ago or two, two and a half years ago and uh, something before uh, the Series A right now and launched our product that we present now. Uh, recently in a closed beta and uh, just about to enter the market with a very promising and successful corporate leads. First slide. Second slide. I take over uh, from here. Thanks, David. Um, so this is, describes our, our offerings, uh, especially to projects um, in a nutshell, and we'll deep dive into some of these topics um, in, the, on, in the later slides. So 
what do we do um, and what do we offer? We provide funding, of course, uh, for project nature-based solutions um, at every project stage. So that's very important. Also, early stage projects are very welcome to be funded through Good Carbon. And we fund them through good buyers. Uh, so uh, as David said, we're using the voluntary carbon market, um, but we do uh, select the corporates that can invest into the projects. Um, and we'll explain that a little bit later as well. We uh, love nature-based solutions and we bring out the best in the project. So we really want to um, support projects to be sh sharing and show and make transparent all their benefits and all their impacts that they can achieve. So um, we, we want to make that uh, transparent and showcase um, their great accomplishments um, when offering their credits or um, at early stage uh, financial products to, to finance the projects. And we also bring out the best in projects at very early stages uh, through support project development support, providing them with guidance um, and providing them with our network, which brings us to the third point on the slide, we build partnerships. We are um, friends and partners of nature-based solution projects. We, we want to uh, work with them together um, and share our network of experts, share our expertise, do knowledge sharing um, in several dimensions to achieve as much as possible towards um, the common goals. Our technological heart is our platform, our Good Carbon platform, where we provide a space where project owners uh, of uh, high quality projects can meet uh, buyers, corporates, companies um, that can invest into those projects. And like I said, uh, the companies are selected so we make sure that they're sustainable and they meet that they meet certain goals before they're allowed or <laughs> they get access uh, to the selected projects so also the projects on the other side uh, we we do select them because we we only work together with high integrity and high impact projects and we have this platform where these two parties can meet um and projects can uh, again make very transparent what they what they have to offer what they can achieve um, and it's all blockchain based and it's all financially regulated um, through a German uh, financial regulation so it's a very transparent and um, a high security platform that can be used um, for these um, important meetings and fundings uh, for projects and uh, yeah we have several financial products and that means several possibilities for project owners um, that David will explain. This is like a little bit of a deep dive between these two ends. So there is, we call it sometimes the side of the carbon entrepreneur and there is the corporate. And to bridge, we invested a lot in technology and adapted our system to regulations. This chart or slide shows a little bit uh, our our perspective. So, um, and you see on the left, I got you, we took out all the additional information to make it understandable for this short uh, minute. So, but uh, on the left hand, you see uh, basically um, um, the, the underlying uh, uh, project and we detach the carbon stream. And this is where we look at now very much the carbon stream from the land, the actual land. Let it be land, so, so forest, soil, or ocean-related uh, projects uh, or ecosystems. And we collect all the data, which is up there from Vera and the best data that we can get. So it's not only Vera, it's Plan Vivo and whatever the standard or uh, Open Forest Protocol, whatever the standard is of the project, we take the data and then, and we add data, also uh, third-party data when it comes to uh, biodiversity, KPIs and, and, and uh, different other uh, ecosystem uh, services that we can measure. And uh, once measured, we put the data on chain. And this is what we visualize there. We put that on chain and fractionalize these uh, 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 data, these data points. And uh, we differentiate also in the different timings and like the vintage. 
uh, in the past, but we also look to the future. The spot market, which is now today's market, everybody knows. I don't need to talk about a lot about this now. Um, the spot market works as it works of today. The only advantage that we and our technology brings to this is uh, this uh, um, uh, transparency and the fractionalization that we do. The forward product is uh, something that also not super new, but it's out there, but the way we build it is uh, um, we think very uh, promising and uh, is something that uh, guarantees a specific quantity in the future. This is something which has a, a scope of three to five, sometimes seven years. And we worked on a, a um, interesting escrow mechanism to make uh, take out the risk that you have um, if you invest into the future. The stream, I think I need to speed up a little bit. The stream product is a second product, which is very similar to a private equity investment. So you don't know exactly what you will get, <laughs> um, but you have for sure a specific percentage of a project. All this, but it's not the real equity invest. It is uh, all like digital and uh, in, 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 in these three different products, our free tokens. It's a token system and I'd love to deep dive on this uh, uh, maybe at another occasion. So these are these free products and these free products allow then corporates, just one last sentence to this one, they allow corporates to do a proper planning also for the next 10 plus years. And this is what we see. Corporates go from like offsetting the past to long-term climate action. This is what they want. And we provide kind of the tools, the technical tools to do this compliant, accountable, transparent, and somehow as a friend of the CFO. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, the next slide maybe then also kind of sums up a little bit. Um, so this is the engine, the token system that we built. But what is it? It's only, it, it's proper, it's transparent, but it's only as good as the projects which uh, that, that you uh, put into the system in the beginning. And there again, it is these three different projects. We are as blue as possible, which means that we think that the 70% of the planet that is uh, blue, which is the ocean and mangrove is uh, an established and learned uh, 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 class and asset or, 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 or a project type. But we also look very much into um, seaweed and seagrass uh, projects and we through the fractionalization we can build different blue portfolios and combine mangrove for example even with coral pro coral restoration projects i think this is also a very interesting thing to look at uh, um, um uh, david i think we need to sorry to interrupt oh, you but i think we are out of the time. Time. Okay, sorry, alexander so is too 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 friendly to interrupt us but okay, I think... sorry alexander <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, have a last sentence. I have a last sentence I have a last sentence. Nice. In a few sentences, that's fine. Okay, just the last sentence, which is um, these three dimensions that we look at. It is not only why we love climate and do not look at a nature-based project and do not look at anything else, because it comes with the biodiversity and it comes with the social impact, which plays a very strong third role for us. And uh, sorry for taking too much time. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, you Nicola, and thank you, David, for the presentation. Um, I will now hand over to Bela from Enverex. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Do you see my screen? So. Yes. You put it in. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. OK. Hi, everyone. My name is Bela Gulanci. Once again, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of um, NYRX. Uh, we are based in Munich. We are an early. Uh, stage startup. We founded the company a year ago. A little bit of my background and our founders' backgrounds, we are coming mainly from the commodity sector. We have been uh, trading carbon, power, gas for the last 15 years. So we kind of have seen uh, the problem many, many years ago uh, uh, in the power sector, in the gas sector in Europe, where everything was very unstandardized, unregulated, and um, there were a lot of intermediators, middlemen between the value chain 
pretty much uh, on the substance of the project developers. So we knew that uh, there has to be a more market approach. We knew that uh, what is missing is really um, opening up the market, being fully independent, and providing access to capital um, via smart digital financial uh, monitoring, reporting, verification um, approach. So um, many of our colleagues here, partners, have already mentioned the digital MRV. We really focus on the financing and we've, uh, we, on the financing aspects and to make sure that we help developers to get finance ready uh, and uh, in front of investors, because we see this is the biggest problem. Uh, there are many marketplaces, there are many um, fine tech solutions out there, but we see the biggest problem that project developers sometimes, they don't know exactly what to do uh, which third party to access from such a big pool of offer out there. And um, yeah, how, how is the best efficient way to get to financing? So um, we developed a fully digital legal financial and tax solution for it, where on one end, we help developers to get uh, access to early stage uh, financing. So um, uh, and based on that, we are selling future carbon credits, uh, and that's the financial vehicle as well, um, how we finance this project on early stage. Uh, we always come two-sided, so we are focusing as well what investors really need uh, in order to, we talk about many times about unlocking capital, it's all about how do we get investors actually invest in these early stage projects, what are the requirements, what are the, um, uh, what are, what are the points which uh, have to be seen. So what we are doing is really uh, focusing on the standardization of the process. We stay fully independent. We don't monitor ourselves. We don't verify ourselves. We work with third party independent service providers, you name it, verification companies, certification companies, or auditors, uh, digital MRV, uh, to make sure that the projects are uh, verified by accredited parties. Um, and after that, uh, we are really focusing to provide um, legal access. Uh, I mean, this is a, another big topic, how difficult it is for project developers who are not really legal experts in this to, to, to really understand what kind of contracts they are signing, what kind of obligations they have, liabilities. So uh, the bill, uh, we build the structure in a way, we make it very easy. We, uh, we are focusing on standardizing on both sides as well for investors and well for project developers, this legal, complicated 80 page contracts. And uh, most importantly, uh, focusing on the business and investors, we provide uh, a solution where investors can have early stage risk and position management um, accessibility. So we see that investors, the main problem why investors don't invest is um, we talk about trust. Yes, we are working on it but uh, there are liquidity issues or risk management issues, how somebody can invest in a project on early stage and keep that risk for the next two to three years until these credits are being issued. So um, we found a solution how to do that, uh, providing actually early stage access by providing uh, an exchange for future plant carbon credits. So in this case, investors can invest in this uh, early stage projects but as well manage the risk in the day after investment. Um, so as said, we are more market-based approach. Our platform, uh, we, can, we even call it more like a crowdfunding approach where multiple investors can invest in a project. Uh, we see with that, uh, that the risk is diversified. Um, uh, investors uh, have better price discovery from early stage and um, that helps as well to build a trust. Um, investing, uh, hopefully, later on, on higher scale. So um, I don't want to, to, to bore about or repeat myself again um, about uh, the main uh, reasons or the problems what I think all the panelists here are solving, but we really try to achieve a more uh, easy way to, to get onboarded or an easy way to get access to the platform. So uh, technology is very important. We are as well blockchain based um, and uh, we see the value of the blockchain in this matter. Uh, 
Um, but as an independent uh, platform, uh, we are focusing really on, on user-friendly, easy way how developers can get access to this uh, to, to their financing early stage. And um, yeah, traction-wise, we are already working on some fantastic projects. We have nature-based projects, but as well, um, a great biochar project uh, in the pipeline. Um, we, we are not specifying what kind of projects should come to our platform. So we are a multi-commodity solution in this case. We, we standardize the process and not focusing on one particular project type. Um, this is as well probably what differentiates us for, from, from other solutions. And uh, we offer that legal, financial, and technical structure for it. Um, many, many competitive advantages or values and benefits for, for both sides. Um, as mentioned, the legal structure, how we work with it, the standardized and digitalized onboarding process, uh, the whole platform, the financial platform to get access easily uh, and flexible to, to, uh, to, to your capital, uh, integrated uh, escrow management service to, to monitor all these uh, uh, project uh, KPIs and milestones, which need to be uh, in order to, to have that bridge between investors and the trust between investors and, and project developers and many, many other uh, great features what we are working and is in progress of uh, development. But yeah, contact us and uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer. Thank you very much, Peter, for this nice presentation. We're coming now to the last presentation, not to the least, but here is Michael from Calirius. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Hang on, just okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. So hopefully now. Yes, it's building up. Lovely. So um one second. So here we go. So yeah, Calirius has said our our um the founder's background is is all banking, right? Um, coming from equities and debt structures, and this is was the angle. Um, like we were looking at uh, the voluntary carbon markets, and identified that um, on the uh, market, so on the secondary on the secondary marketplaces, there are some um, structures which um, block more investment on that end. And on the other side, you see um, that uh, the, the funding gap um, has a reason, which is mainly um, um, data, which keeps a lot of people from entering this market, especially the institutional clients. On the end of this uh, of the value chain, so what we do is like only invest uh, the, the investment side of things and uh, the marketplace um, side of things. So the, the marketplace as such is a procurement service, um, first of all, for corporate clients, because their um, procurement service, as started mentioned as well, is, is getting more complicated, 12 years out, reaching SPTI targets in 2035. How can you minimize risks, uh, given different lead time, different delivery risk profiles of different methodologies? Um, and this is what we do in building portfolios for the corporate clients, um, but also tackling the institutional clients um, with those uh, credits um, is, uh, issued or pre-issuance, uh, wrapping around uh, financial products, uh, but also giving a settlement and clearing infrastructure to institutional trading desks. On the uh, funding solution side, um, there is um, basically we put old products in your shoe if you want so. So from our background um, as, as bankers, securitization is quite a tough word in the, in the afternoon, is a, a, a proper vehicle which works for infrastructure, but also for, for nature. And um, this is what we wrap around um, a nature assets. Like um, if, you, if you look at um, asset-backed security structures, for example, um, there's always kind of a, a risk profile attached to each branch. So someone, someone is the risk taker and someone is happy to pay up for less risk. And this is what we try to combine, i.e. you have a corporate taking more risk, but then um, uh, paying a higher price for less delivery risk. But at the same time, um, you have a financial investor happy to take up the risk for, for a certain yield. 
at the end of the day, for us, it's always uh, important. So both sides of the of, of the equation, like the marketplace and um, the, um, the the funding business, ask for a lot of risk modeling, and this requires uh, quality data. And this is some sometimes a struggle for us, um, to be quite frank, to get the right data, which we can then use for the due diligence process, for um, our quality assessment. And uh, then finally use MRV solutions uh, where we would ask every uh, project developer to partner up with um, our MRV partners on the ground, like Open Forest Protocol, but also above the ground, for example, on forest and so on and so forth. Our focus is on um, nature-based solutions, uh, plus biochar, plus uh, enhanced rock weathering, um, which we see as a kind of a derivative of, of soil. Um, we are more green than blue. Um, because uh, in oceans, we are not there yet. This is something we're building, but uh, focus of these days is clearly on forest, uh, soil, and uh, wetlands, especially peatlands. And um, we're starting in the feasibility stage, so quite early. And this is brings me back to the topic I said, you know, risk is also a function of, of, of time. So the earlier you start, the more data we would expect and the more... Um, we would challenge you as a, as a project developer also to be open for um, MOV solutions and so on and so forth. Um, we connect um, also different players in the sector, so i.e. soil with uh, enhanced rock weathering um, um, projects. This is what, what we also do because we love the um, circular economy uh, approach. And we are standard agnostic because we think our quality, um, our quality engine allows us to, to say that um, we are set up with like 15 different registries, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to a due diligence and our quality approach should allow us to kind of evaluate any registry. And as soon as it's comparable, um, so we don't differentiate between um, an ISO product uh, project or a, a VERA project. Um, um, so don't, because it, it sometimes it's just like you don't get the funding. I think Bela said it that uh, a lot of uh, projects don't get funding simply because of the size or um, are too small to to or pay up for for the um, um, for the registries and so on and so forth. So that's why we also uh, prefer smaller registries. And uh, last but not least, um, I said uh, uh, monitoring for us is key. Um, because we have a, a data-driven um, um, quality engine, which also kind of circles back from uh, with the with the MRV data, and this is key for us, right? Um, how does our quality framework works? At the end of the day, it's a three-layer process. So we start with a, a country assessment. Um, we have a tiering in terms of countries, then uh, the program as such. And this is where it comes uh, the the comparison between like the various but also like smaller registry like by Klimastand in Germany or so, and then we go down to the project development where we kind of would challenge uh, each project developer with uh, the guiding questions around each and every, every uh, different methodology, i.e., improved forest management, afforestation, and so on and so forth, and uh, finally, um, hopefully get uh, the right data to set up proper funding solutions and uh, which could be an in institutional institutional investor grade um, as said as a big security structures uh, fund structures and so on and so forth that's already it um, i kept it very short um, questions welcome later then thank you michael that was on time um yeah so that was but these were the presentations. Um, we are now moving into what we call a summary or lightning round. Um, please, all presenters, um, put on your cameras, put on your microphones. Um, we will try to capture now the yeah the key messages of each presentations, and we will start with Damien. So, what is your key message for the for the audience for the presenters? Mm -hmm. The message is that uh, Terraformation is a one-stop shop for projects on the ground. Um, with our accelerator, we provide to the team training, early funding for the pilot phase to convince uh, investor uh, the our apps for tracking um, trees planted and also impact of the project, more social impact, and 
uh, access uh, to the uh, large large uh, financing with the forward forward sell that we are uh, doing. Um, and uh, the project are working. We create a court for ten projects. Then you are working with ten other meds with different places of the world and to to grow up and access to this uh, to the carbon finance. Thank you, Damien. Let's move over to the next one, Frederick. I think you want to give the key message. Yes, happy to. Um, so for us, there are four main points here. The first one, which is the most important one, is that we provide accessible and transparent MRV tools uh, to all forestation projects around the world. Um, and we do that as a foundation of a new carbon standard for afforestation, agroforestry, and reforestation projects uh, with a very digital uh, approach to it. We've opened the tools to whoever wants to access them uh, end of July, August last year, and we've been onboarding 34 projects at this point and 20 validators, and we have a lot more in the pipeline coming to the platform. We'll be announcing very soon, probably a couple of weeks, uh, a platform where we can show, we can uh, propose the projects to, to be visible and also working with uh, explore.land uh, on how to integrate together. Uh, so that's very exciting. And we, we are super happy to, to be here and you know, have a collaborative mindset about what we, we have to do together to scale those solutions. Yeah, thank you, Frederick. Um, moving over to David and Nicola or Wuno. Beautiful, thank you. Um, our summary uh, I need to add something, and this is, I really like this event, I have to say it again, and uh, the last words were like uh, collaboration, it is a big collaborative effort to restore our ecosystems, so it's really great to share and to connect. Our focus, what we think is that, especially because all these fraud and all the bad image and the reputational issue in this market, it, we need to raise the standard. And this is why, especially for us, the idea is uh, identify these projects, the best projects out there, and put a lot of effort into the relationship with the project and develop and support the project and allow this upfront financing, early, early, early stage. They need to start today and not tomorrow, these projects. This is the focus. I think we are not alone with this and we are lucky that it's not like this. But this is the upfront financing thing where we are strong uh, or where we want to make a difference. The next thing is also, what is the difference between a credit and we're all talking credit for $10 or $20, yeah? And uh, we need to educate the market. So, and this is where nature and all the biodiversity aspects that Michael also mentioned, for example, from Calirius, that we look at in our framework also, what is it? What is the ecosystem impact also beyond carbon? Yeah, and there comes the biodiversity in and here comes the social impact in, you know? Uh, this is the second part. And the third part is then also something um, I think uh, it's not about just selling, selling, selling to anybody who's then uh, uh, making up his story yeah, uh, out there in the market. We, we think it's also important to not only educate the market, but also to curate a little bit the demand side. And I'm talking about the corporate side. Yeah. So um, and uh, uh, really make sure that the corporates in our thinking do not uh, just buy and compensate whatever they did. We think that corporates need to transform their business models. We think that they need to have excellence in uh, their carbon reduction strategies, yeah, and also beyond. And only if this, only if this is the truth, or if this is reality, or if there's evidence for this, only then they become a partner for us to our platform and get access to these uh, premium credits. Maybe again too long, but I wanted to share it. Thank you. Thank you, David. And now moving over to Bela from Inverex. Yeah, 
I'm not going to share now anything. So just to summarize it, I think uh, many people said uh, the important stuff, but what we still believe that we need more standardized way how we approach project financing. We need better solutions on financial monitoring, legal structures, and um, and and uh, fundraising methods. And we have to understand as well what investors need or what is when do we unlock this capital uh, for investors? Because at the end, we are all working here to 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 enable that, uh, and we are all working here to finance any kind of project which helps uh, to get to net zero and to achieve our targets. So um, I think that we need more professionalism uh, to, to be involved. And uh, we are here as Envirex to, to help and uh, yeah, finance ready and investable, investable ready. But for that, we I think we still need to do a lot of, lot of good uh, corporations, partnerships, as many of you mentioned, um, and achieve this goal together and be more transparent about how we do it and what we do. Yeah, thank you, Bela. So the last um, lightning to Michael. Yeah, well, I can only echo what, what Bela said um, 100%. So at the end of the day, uh, I said, you know, the procurement process is getting is getting more uh, um, more tricky for corporates. This is number one. Number two is that uh, also the importance, fortunately, climbs up the ladder. So while you had like one or two persons, you know, randomly buying spot credits, uh, it now is a matter of uh, the upper management. And these guys, is the same as the institutional clients we are tackling, they are used to highly polished presentations, 100% uh, accurate risk modeling and so on and so forth, right? Not saying that bank risk models always work as we, as we saw recently, but you know, they're used to it. And um, this is the uh, what, what they also expect from us to deliver. And um, in order to be able to deliver that, we would need exactly this data standardization, but also all the in, in details to be able to deliver proper um, risk and, and financial modeling exactly to that client group. And um, so don't be shy. There is nothing like too much data. Thank you, Michael, also for that. Um, we are now moving into the Q&A um, session. I think we have the summary of all these presentations in our mind. Um, I also want to welcome my colleague Emilia to the stage um, who has um, curated and brought the questions from the chat together. We also made some thoughts up front about good questions. Some of them are already answered. Um, some might not be answered because the, in, in course of the time. But maybe let's start with a question round and by Emilia. Please try to be concise and yeah, short with your answers because we want to answer as many as po possible questions in the in that time. But we are good in time, so. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you to all our speakers. It's a very hard job to condense so much information in six minutes. Uh, I, I wasn't envying this task at all. Um, and now more condensing <laughs> with, with answering the questions. Uh, let's move by order of presentation. Uh, and uh, so we will, uh, we will start with Damien from uh, Terraformation mm, with one question from the chat. Do you work on carbon capture from forestry alone or do you uh, also consider other types of projects like regenerative agriculture or will you consider them in the future? Would be the first question. Yep, thank you, good question. Um, for the moment, we focus on native biodiverse reforestation projects. However, our last uh, court, we received almost 200 uh, applications from uh, projects all over the world. And uh, an important part of them were agroforestry projects. Then we are now working on a specific uh, agroforestry accelerator that we will launch uh, in a couple of months, but it's um, it's not yet the case, and it will be. And there is a specific models linked to agroforestry. Then it will be a specific accelerator for agroforestry projects. Thank you very much. Um, and the second question is. 
or, or actually, I, I forgot to mention that we won't be able to address all questions, but we have noted them all down and uh, those questions will be answered by, by the speakers in a written document. So whatever is not answered today uh, will be answered in written form and you will receive all the documentation, just a note for the participants, sorry <laughs> for this interruption. Uh, so Damien, second question for you. What is needed to apply for the accelerator? Um, we we want to be as much as welcoming as possible, but uh, the the minimum is of course that um, project that already uh, have done at least a, um, a couple of hectares of of, uh, of uh, ref reforestation that they are able also to um, to have clarity on the land ownerships that they can um, have in plan uh, they can target at least 1000 hectare for rest rest restoration and that they are um, they are using uh, native biodiverse forest we 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 don't support uh, monoculture and we support bio biodiverse and that they can that they they want and the project will have impact of surrounding communities it this is a basic i would say criteria and we have more and i can send you also for potential applicants a full list of uh, criteria but i just summarize the main one thank you very much uh moving on to uh, a Frederick and Aurelien from Open Forest Protocol. Uh, so Frederick answered many of the questions already in the chat. I'm going to select two that he didn't manage to answer yet. The first one is, what drone data is valuable to provide for the validation of forests? Are there any minimum requirements? Yeah, so there are no, in terms of data from drone, there are no minimum requirement. Uh, we're working only with, at this point, with ground truth data. However, the more data, the better. Uh, as, you know, carriers just presented, you know, there, there's no such thing as too, too many data. Uh, so I think the more you can provide, the better. Uh, it's in our system, actually, it's not necessary to have drone data. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I see you answered um, the API or SDK question. Uh, so we have one question for you. What is your vision for the carbon market? Um, how do you think it might improve in the future? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question. How, how long do I have? <laughs> no, it's just kidding. Um, no, I think that my vision for the carbon market is discussion exactly as the ones we have today, trying to figure out how we can collaborate. That's the most important thing, uh, collaboration between the, the actual players, the stakeholders in this system, but it's also education mostly. Um, what I've seen throughout all the discussion I've had with VCs, investors, uh, validators, projects, um, there are a lot of people that actually don't understand what is a carbon credit in the first place. Uh, you know, how to actually the market functions or dysfunctions, <laughs> both things. But in, there is a lot of education to actually address this. And I, I think one also one good point that David mentioned is that we should be aware of who the common credits are going to be sold to at the end. So the education is not only about what we do, it's also how people perceive the common credits and how they use. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if we, we bring that conversation more openly and uh, we try to bring it in a very transparent and open manner, it's going to help us all. Um, and hopefully, if we push that effort, this carbon market will improve overall. That's my best wish for the next 10 years. Thank you. It's a very timely wish in the light of, of, of the new IPC report. Uh, and yeah. Let's move on now uh, to David and Nicola from Good Carbon. I'm going to select two questions and like I said, all of them will be answered. So uh, I'm sorry to the participants whose questions will not be answered now, uh, but you will receive answers in written form. First question, 
Uh, do you plan to implement a royalty model for reselling of carbon credits in case of B2B cases? It is very important for project developers. Nicola, do you want me to take this one? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes and no, <laughs> as of today. So free limitations. <laughs> um, we think, or we believe that um, it is not, in, it is important to have a secondary market if it is under control, but we don't support uh, um, that uh, you speculate and uh, the actors who try to uh, make margins and just uh, uh, margins and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy. Uh, we don't think that this is uh, 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 what we need right now. We think uh, that there should be a controlled secondary market. So we think that for example, and again, we are targeting corporates, which is different to impact investors. It's important to make this uh, uh, open up these two boxes. Back to the corporates. Corporates should not uh, just speculate. <laughs> uh, corporates should uh, do proper planning. And then, of course, there are circumstances there is uh, uh, maybe a big success in their emission or in their transformation strategy. There is M&A activity. There are different things going on, you know, that change their needs to net zero, but we educate them also to go beyond net zero, which is then also entering a field which is not only carbon credits, but we're also talking biodiversity credits. Look at the European uh, taxonomy and all, all these things. So we're heading in another direction than uh, accelerating transactions on the secondary market, to keep the answer short for today. <laughs> Thank you, David. Well, uh, that links very nicely to uh, the last question that we got here in the chat from William Park, uh, telling us that in Loreto, Peru, Peru, where he works, there's a problem with perverse incentives. Indigenous communities with very low rates of deforestation are excluded from carbon projects. Is there an, any example uh, that you know of or that you've worked with where a community has benefited? Um, um, through such a project, uh, through biodiversity credits or other methodology that values intact ecosystems. I think so far it's very it's quite tricky um, to to, um, to to get funding for this. I think there are, there are certain uh, approaches that have been started, but they've also been criticised. Um, so usually with um if, if you want to have a conservation project uh, that is that is being uh that is being funded you have to have a threat uh, that is in place um but we know that there are approaches to pay for ecosystem services rather than for for um for uh, counteraction against threats um but it's a, to our knowledge, it's not a very common um, way of, of financing. Unfortunately, um, we think that has to move into that direction um, because uh, we don't really want threats anymore <laughs> anywhere. Uh, so ideally, um, you you do get paid, and a and an intact forest is more important or more or worth more than any um, that than than uh, like. Pro projects or or deforestation or whatever else you can do with this um but on the carbon market and also on the biodiversity credit market as far as i know so far you always have to show that you are doing better than other regions or um, that you are counteracting a certain threat thank you thank you nicola um we move uh, on now to bella from enverex and uh, first question would be to elaborate a little bit more on how Enverex is uh, building uh, transparency and trust for institutional investors specifically. Yeah, uh, I actually think that today probably that's one of the, the biggest problems out there that um, institutional investors haven't made that big move to invest in large scale uh, because they have uh, different expectations. They have, uh, I would say, bad experience as well uh, with the markets and pretty much the capital is there, but is not uh, unlocked. 
Um, I would call, uh, we still believe that uh, the carbon markets are still at a very, very early stage uh, because of the non-standardization on regulation. I mean, there are a lot of work happening, um, uh, but I think it's still not there that, to get that big trust of investors to, to invest in large scale. So we have to bridge that in a way. So technology is one because it's very important to understand for institutional investors who we address, they are more coming actually from the professional world, trading houses, energy companies, uh, companies who actually have very, very long uh, experience to, to deal with commodities. I mean, carbon is not, I mean, we, we, I've been trading carbon for almost 15 years, you know, the, the compliance markets, uh, the voluntary carbon market is still there, that there is, that trust is not uh, being um, bridged in, in this way. So you need structures, you need standardizations, just to keep it short. You need uh, legal frameworks, which apply globally, not just for future restrictions. Uh, you need price discovery. So we actually do believe that uh, you have to honor investors in a way to, to take that risk because they are the one who actually finance uh, the developer's project. So to take that risk, you have to, to give them something, some value and benefits other than just the biodiversity and the whole um, uh, net zero targets. You have to incentivize them financially as well. Uh, this is how normal markets work. Uh, and this is what we believe it has to take for the voluntary carbon markets as well to get there, to call it even a commodity or to call it even a professional uh, or liquid, highly scalable uh, marketplace. Thank you, Bella. Mm. Now a question more from the project side. How would you encourage projects uh, to work with Enverex? Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. So, I mean, we, we want to stay fully independent. This is very important just to mention again uh, that we we are not there to say what is a good credit, what is a bad credit, what is a good project, and what is a bad uh, project. We analyze your project. We uh, get the minimum requirements which have, uh, have to be fulfilled in order to be financial ready. So when we talk about financial readiness, you can be at very early stage as well financial ready, but that's the price what you will get. So that's what the investors will take into account as a risk assessment. Uh, we try to encourage developers to uh, project developers to to move on in the ladder, um, get audited, get a feasibility study, get a baseline, um, and involve in this process. But we are there to support from a very early stage. Get funding step by step. Don't get funding immediately. Don't pretty much sell all your upside. Keep the upside, and we are there as well to eliminate all the intermediators between. So. We, we make it more accessible, uh, more uh, user-friendly as well to, to, uh, to, to get to that financing um, um, and all with that transparency and price discovery what uh, many, many people here are uh, talking. So I think this is, this is my message as well that if you need financing, that should be priority to, to raise as much money as you need in that moment. Proof that you are um, that you are achieving your KPIs, your milestones, come back, raise more money, do it step by step and build that trust with the investors. So uh, we are just playing one part of it, but actually the project developer is very, very important that they deliver. And it's very important that uh, they match as well all these expectations what investors have, because if they fail, uh, we don't have carbon credits, we don't have anything to argue at in the future. So um, this is our... Uh, as well focus to to help that or have that process thank you thank you bala uh going to uh michael from calirios um so michael as you mentioned you have uh deep roots in the financing and banking sector or calirios has um can you elaborate a little bit more on how you leverage this experience and network um when you apply it to uh, nature-based projects? Yeah. So uh, first of all, I mean, the network is, uh, we didn't do anything else than uh, 20 years each talking to corporates and institutional investors on debt, on, on asset-backed securities, on, on equities, what have you. And uh, at the end of the day, this is the same conversation we're having now, right? So 
um, as Bela also so mentioned. So the, the ecosystem for financial uh, institutions is not there yet, but it's, it's also up to us to educate them. I.e., if you want to build a fund structure, try to get this from a, a investment manager today, they won't say thanks but no thanks simply because the lack of pricing transparency. And this is what they need for a risk assessment. And as soon as that does not work, you can simply forget the rest. So you have to go there and step by step educate those people because they are keen to invest, right? So also um, I'm trading this, buy side trading this, approaching us and say, I want to buy carbon. And then when you start telling them, okay, which carbon, then the whole thing gets complicated because they are used to seamless settlement. They're used to standardized processes and so on and so forth, right? And then when you start like, yeah, what do you want to buy? Removal or, or uh, a, a reduction? Do you want to buy forest or, or ocean? Then the whole conversation goes completely in a, in a different direction uh, and in a, in a wrong direction actually because they won't step away. And this is where you have to educate people to make their life easier. And this is what we try to do. Just say, don't worry, we hold your hand, we take care. Um, we get you there where you want to be because they want to invest. And um, and this is how we leverage our, our network. And it's the demand is there. So you have wealth managers, you have uh, um, um, family offices. They want to get involved. You have even bigger family offices. They, and they come in from, from a different level saying, oh, okay, we have a forest. Uh, so far, we have only focused on, on, on timber. Uh, why not putting a carbon credit uh, project uh, on top, right? And there is nothing wrong about that because slowly but surely warms up the whole industry for those uh, projects and ultimately for nature as an asset. And uh, this is this is what we all want. Thank you. Yes, um, it was mentioned also um, earlier that education is a very important part of it. I mean, we've been having um, carbon credit markets for, for more than a decade, and some people still don't know what exactly a carbon credit is, or actors in the market still don't fully understand it. Um, and our final question uh, for today, um, I think, uh, uh, Marco, do you want, are you addressing this question to uh, Michael from Calirius? I can just... Yeah, I think just in general, it was very nice. I think great alignment, data-driven impact measurement, and that brings sense to the window dressing industry, if greenwash or not, it can be changed. But what do you charge? Like um, the dilemma of project developers is that feasibility, st uh, feasibility studies are very expensive. You also need to have a team for that. So there seems to be the difficulty in the beginning for project developers. And um, I think there are quite a few from the traditional carbon broking world who you are probably trying to disrupt with your business model. But if you can maybe tell us like what do product developers give to you and maybe also at what point you bring in corporates or other stakeholders to scale the project. Yeah. So um, as we start from uh, the feasibility study has for, for the time being, um, at least to be somehow in place, right? So because we have to rely on certain data, we have to do um, our background checks on, on land rights, on uh, uh, baseline assumptions, which may, might come depending on the methodology, which we might re-verify with our MRV partners and on so on and so forth. This is what we do. But if that is kind of an, a, an, a, a positive due diligence first check, um, we are more than happy to present that to, to investors. And then the question is simply for us, um, how do you wrap that into a proper financial product? Not necessarily only like traditional financial product. It can be also, we can tokenize it, whatever you want. It depends on the size. It depends on the, on the, on, on, on the demand side. So, um, and, and, and this is, this is what we assess then, right? So if you start like, let's say with a 500,000 uh, euro project on soil organic carbon, you don't have to set up a fund structure simply because it's too expensive. Whereas, you know, you might have like 20 of those wrapped into a fund structure and then uh, trying to achieve stable um, carbon streams over the next 10 years that uh, where a company can rely on, then all of a sudden it makes sense, right? So sorry for not answering your question, <laughs> but um, this is uh, still uh, all work in progress, right? So it really depends 
and, and this is what, what I also meant with like education, you have to go there and sit down um, with these investors because don't expect them to know anything about it. I mean, we had the CDM markets, which worked for financial investors pretty well because they were kind of standardized. And uh, uh, but then uh, the with the, uh, the Paris mechanism, all of a sudden, it's kind of you know gets more heterogeneous, and then we had these problems. So you have to get back, sit down with these guys, and educate them. And this is not what you want as a platform business, to be honest, right? Because um, you want a, a quicker, a quicker uh, execution. But it is what it is. You have to do this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we are slowly coming to an end for this first event and i want to end with a big thank you to to the presenters but also to the audience so we had um, about 200 registrations and up to 100 participants i think that's really nice for such an online event and of course 101 I alex 101 i saw it <laughs> yeah perfect yeah and hope, 101 diamond times yeah and 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 i hope maybe we will see you in some continuing events or even at the NOAA conference in December um, at the project stage or at some other stages there. Um, we will certainly update you about upcoming events. We will also um, um, share a recording of this event. So if you have specific, if you want to see something again, so you can wind back and have a look. Um, we also will um, create a document that puts together some high level key findings. So something similar like we did in the lightning round. And we will also organize a joint um, structured call for projects because we have these marketplace infrastructure, people, organizations here in place. And now we need, um, yeah, interesting projects that could be funded because th th this is what, what, what it is all about. Yeah, so from my side, have a great day. Um, maybe a final word from Marco, and then we go well, into- Only that we will have several calls like this. Uh, the next one could be to meet the nature data lines, the solutions we have, which you can tell the investor, this is the type of report you can expect. Um, I think just getting to know your projects better, maybe have the projects um, share documents about their plans. This is, I think, what we should we should get to know each other throughout the year, and then maybe at the NOAA conference or not. But I think knowing each other's projects and how they develop and what challenges they have is the best way to learn. And um, it has to be collaboration. Somebody said it earlier in the middle of the call. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you, you all together. Have a, have a great day. Everyone, and spot see on. You soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.